What is up, everybody? It's Alex, once again, back with the EOT Newsflash, episode 91, untitled. But that's okay, because I'm surrounded by friends tonight. Directly beneath me, we have got the, spe the Piercer of Spells himself, Steven's back, and then to my that way on the screen, Busted Sleeves, Sean is back as well. Welcome, gentlemen. Yeah, man. Welcome. Excited. Excited to be hey. back. <laughs> gonna be a fun one. Oh, yeah. So much fun tonight. So much fun tonight. I'm gonna make my... I can't really see myself on my own camera, so there we go. There we go. Awesome. So, lots to talk about tonight. Um, Pre-release was over the weekend. Sean and I got to play in once. Steve not so much, but he's going to still comment on, on cards. Uh, banned and restricted updates happened on Monday. Some people are mad. Most people are happy. And then we've got Standard on the horizon. What new things are in store for you uh, Standard players out there in the world and uh, where you can go play this weekend, too, over the next couple of weeks? We've got a bunch of Standard events going up. So before we jump into that, though, I want to throw it to you guys really quickly and just get like a recap of where the heck we have been for like the past X number of weeks. I'm going to throw it to Sean first. What, have, what has life been up for you? Uh, life's been kind of insane. Um... That's an understanding, Man, I, my friend. <laughs> I don't know the last time. Yeah, I don't know the last time I, I did a podcast. Um, I've streamed intermittently. Um, I did some work with some MTG deck techs, and I'm still semi-affiliated, but I'm kind of branching out and doing my own account for a little while. Um, but really, personal life has kind of taken over. I'm getting a master's degree in learning design for do online. So that's pretty time consuming. I switched jobs from teaching in the classroom to doing district coaching and curriculum development. Yep. And then I switched jobs again uh, <laughs> this week. And uh, with two weeks notice, I had a, uh, I drove for 19 hours from Dallas to Orlando, and I now am a contractor doing coding instruction for schools in Orlando. And every week I fly from Orlando to South Carolina for two days, and I fly back to Orlando and then back to South Carolina and then back to Orlando. And so I'm gonna have a lot of time on my own and travel. So I will be streaming a lot more often uh, when I'm not working on my master's degree, which I should finish in August. Um, awesome. so oh, nice. Yeah, I have, a, I have a contract stuff I'm working on. So once I finish contract stuff in April, my schedule will get a little more open. And after August, I'll finish my master's degree. And then I can go back to being a uh, irresponsible challenge, playing video games until the <laughs> It'll be great. It'll be great. But uh, I'm still trying to get settled here. Uh, I'll be back to DFW a lot from traveling because my, my job helps me travel. Um, and then over summers and stuff. So, but yeah, I, my life's just been every time I turn around, I got something different going on. So. Yeah, yeah. And so what I'm actually hearing here is that when Magic Fest uh, Orlando comes around at the end of this year, we can all stay at Sean's house. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, I will be at a efficient like $500 uh, bachelor pad apartment. So you can all stay oh, nice. on the floor, as I will likely also be on the floor <laughs> <laughs> because I, I've been I, there. I've only brought two folding chairs with me. So I'm in an Airbnb for 40 days, and then I have two folding chairs uh, that I will set up in my living room and then I'll figure out a bed eventually. So That sounds uh, like this apartment when I first moved here. It was an air mattress, two lawn chairs, and a cardboard yeah. box that I put my laptop on for like a week. It was great. <laughs> I have a big plastic bin for a TV and I'm going to just like set that up. I brought all my electronics and that's all that matters. <laughs> and I brought like rusty blue yeah. old like 1980s folding chairs. So that's my... Love that it. is my... That's my situation for the next while, because the company climbs a lot real quickly, so I'm just not going to get settled until I know exactly where I'm staying yet. Yeah, sure, sure. But, it seems like the run of passage yeah. when you move to Florida, you just bring the, the essentials, so like my laptop, my magic cards, yeah. and a pair of underwear was like all I brought with me, and that's just yeah. you know, it's how we got by. If you come in too prepared, people uh, look at you weird, so you got to come oh, in yeah, a little yeah. wild. Yeah. I, I think but. Sean's gotten a first a taste, a first hand taste of just how weird Florida is now. Just wait, it gets worse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, we'll see. I'm also not in Florida very often because, like, the upside is I'm going to go to more GPs and SCGs. So if people have tournaments they're going to and they want to meet up with me, I'll, I'll be going to them more often because my job flies me on Thursday nights from uh, South Carolina back to Florida. And I work remotely from home on Fridays. So instead, they said that I can fly anywhere else in the U.S. if it's not a lot more expensive. Um, and oh, I just nice. to get my way back home in Orlando. So... Some weekends I'll fly back to DFW, um, and then other times I'll fly, like I'm going to Memphis, I'm coming back for the SCG Dallas. Um, so just basically if there's an event that I'm like, this event seems good, I feel well prepared for it, and the return tickets aren't very expensive, as long as I give notice, I can just go to whatever event I want to. So I'll probably go to a little more events than I used to. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. Got, dude, gotta get those lightning bolt promos. Gotta get those lightning bolt promos. <laughs> oh yeah, dude. It's awesome. <laughs> uh, for the most part, if I give them notice about 
three to five weeks in advance. Um, that sounds oh, like yeah. that's pretty good notice. Um, so oh, like yeah. they normally book all the flights about about a month out. So oh, wow. very yeah. cool, very cool. Yeah. Well, there you go. That is the that is the busted sleeves update. See yeah. him in a city near you. And yeah. well, I, I, I'll also be in Switzerland in March. So like, oh. there's a lot going on. <laughs> there, there, there you go. For, nice. for the nice. five fans we have in Switzerland, you know, yeah. I don't want to I don't want to brag, but I'm a man of the world. What can I say? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> love it, love it. And we got a little bit of a taste from, from you last week, Stephen, but you, you've, you've had some significant life changes. You, you're, you're now a, 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 an honest man, as it were. I guess, yeah, that's one way to put it. I uh, got married back in uh, November and also got a house uh, a week and a half later. Do not recommend doing <laughs> those at the same time, but more power to you if you try. You said that, and I was like, yeah, that's doesn't sound like a great idea, but this is, this is your your thing. But good luck, got fun. This is called yeah, a no. learning experience. So yeah, know. no, it worked out. Like we hit the uh, like lull in the wedding planning, which is about like a, a month to two weeks before, and we're just like, yeah, let's go look at some houses. And then we found one we like. And our realtor was like, well, you never know, it's gonna be on the market. And it's like, yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> Yeah, oh, he, so. he, he totally caught like that. That is the ultimate salesman trick. Oh, the car won't be here tomorrow. Uh, yeah, yeah, you yeah, got to yeah. buy it. Come, come on. Slaps, no, come on. on. Slaps the roof of this house. You don't know <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. how many pierces can fit in this bad boy. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, uh, it's good, though. Like, we got a pretty good deal on it. That sounds awesome. awesome. That's awesome. obviously you haven't added decorations yet, but there's going to be a spell curse poster up there before too long. Or, well, not, not poster, but the... Uh, the artwork. The artwork. It'll be great. Go for a life in the low, masterpiece, and a dark button. The, the, the original spell pierce art or the. No, 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 the masterpiece uh, oh, the spell ma pierce oh, that's art. Right. That's yes. the alternate art from the original angle that Joseph um, Mahan, I believe, Mahin, or I yeah, not know that. Uh, that he did. Yeah, it's, it's really cool. He 3D modeled it, so he just rotated it. <laughs> Different story, but it's pretty cool. Go look up. Well, very cool, very cool. And I, and I guess I'll throw it out there, you know, I actually have a new job myself as of May of last year. I've, I've moved away from the uh, the IT consulting world into the financial technology world now. And nice. uh, it's a lot of fun, actually. It's a lot of fun to talk about magic. And that's what you people here came for, magic. So let's talk about magic. So Monday, there was a lot of uh, a lot of anticipation because that was our banned and restricted update announcement. Everyone was kind of clamoring, you know, you no, know, it's always the same song and dance every time this happens. All the modern people go, oh, Stoneforge Mystics, Splinter Twin, something's gonna come off the band list. And for let's see, what feels like like the sixth time in a row, nothing came off, but something went on. Crack, crank, crank clan, crack, crack clan. I can't say that word. Crank clan Ironworks. Is now banned and modern, and as Sean, I know that you're kind of a fan of prison style s decks. You know, you had a lot of lantern control back in the day. I imagine that you still have it, you know, sleeved in a in a very dark spot somewhere to come out at a moment's notice. What oh, what, yeah. are, what are your thoughts on the banning of KCI finally? Um, so from a from a KCI perspective, Stephen would definitely be the the stronger person. From a remainder of the modern field perspective. As a as like a, a prison player, I, I didn't like the deck because it, it interacts on an angle that we couldn't really prison very effectively. Mm -hmm. You needed like a oh. lot of needles and like different ways to interact and hate card um, and snaring bridges, which is mostly typically worthless. Yep. Um, and so it interacted in on a bunch of different angles that made it hard to effectively hate. And that was from a prison standpoint and just like any other deck standpoint. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, and then the pro the other issue was that like it operates on so many different levels. That the cards people are bringing into hate inter incrementally like crush other decks, right? So yeah. like, you know, Dredge has been a deck I've been on for a while, um, and so really? it was really good. It got really good right off the bat, and so uh, Rest in Peace and Leyline of the Void and Surgical Extraction and uh, Ravenous Trap, those were better cards, and mm -hmm. they also had some play, not as great, but there was some play against KCI. Um, and then Dredge started dropping in, in value because once you can get more ley lines and recipe pieces, it doesn't put up as many results. So theoretically, that mm -hmm. those cards should disappear, right? right? And so then you're able to like um, strategically alternate between Affinity, Phoenix, and Dredge by reading metagames, which is what I tend to do best as I go into a tournament, and I'm able to shift to which of these decks is going to have least hate. Well, out of those three decks, 
Um, Phoenix and Dredge operate best if Graveyard hates down. Affinity operates best if Artifact hates down. KCI existing means both of those hates are existent at all times. Um, and I didn't have all the pieces of Tron. So I was just left kind of like <laughs> grinding it out. Um, and I was doing okay, but like the deck was just way too resi resistant. And like, uh, it was, it's weird because it's not like as other previous power decks, um, like Eldrazi Winter, where you're like, oh, it gets banned because it's oppressively unrelenting, strong and consistent and beat you. Um, it's banned because it is boringly resistant from yeah. a non, non pilots. It's a fun deck to pilot. If you're not a pilot, um, it's really it's really boring to watch, and it's not like it's over quick. It's this slow drawn out process that involves a lot of explanations. Man, I've, yeah. I I'm one of my favorite things before before I got banned, reading all the spreadsheets of people explaining loops because <laughs> it's like, look, if we have a only there's Sean, only, like, there's only involves, seven like, loops once you have spine of this shot. Well, right, but like, but the the loops aren't just like these two things do this. Like, it's yeah, this yeah. theory. The loops are like like trees right yeah it's like be, be, <laughs> yeah they're trees and so much as how you initiate them from a given board state but yeah like ideally well, they all have, have, like, they all have these like combination. well but they all have these same this series of branches and so they all like depending on what your opponent's got going on and depending on the cards you hit you might like take them and then transition but and like it's just super convoluted <laughs> it's it's one of those things where if it's not super consistent, you know, like ad nauseum and like doomsday decks and stuff, um, if it's not as consistent and it can be hated and storm, I'm not as big of a problem, but it's so resistant to hate that you yeah. shouldn't have one of the best decks in the field. One of the most consistent decks in the field also be this tediously complicated. Um, yeah. like, uh, Titan is that way. And so Titan very well might get another ban in the next year. Cause if you've been following, titan shift it's going down the same path where it's really yeah, consistent it's, doing well it's yeah. really complicated ways to win out of random board states tons of different lines which are really fun um the difference between it and kci is once it happens it happens it's yeah. not a series of loops involved drawing a million cards you're just dead oh look yeah at but you whenever you establish a loop in kci as long as you can explain the loop you like you have the win. So like it's similar to Titan in that like once you get to the point where you sorry, one second. <laughs> hey, Zuko, Zuko, where's mommy? Where's mommy? Okay. I had to go tell him to go find him. Um but uh like once you get to the point where you're doing a loop or winning with either deck, it's relatively quick. Uh but that being said to Sean's point, whenever you're winning with uh prime time, uh you just like have your deck in your hand. And you're, like, I'm gonna get this land, this land, this land. We're doing this, this, this. This is yeah. how I win. Gotcha. Yeah. And so it's, it's it, a, it's it a, it's a, it's a quicker in that sense. It's a quick kill too. Well, yeah. But then yeah. also like in non-major tournaments, um, it also has um, the the other issue with it is that like for players who aren't familiar, and then they have to have these loops explained in slow detail. Yeah. yeah. And so then they start getting frustrated and feeling stupid. because so like, that doesn't make sense. Like, how is this happening? Um, and then on camera, it's really easy for a Titan shift, if we're in a big tournament and it's on camera, for me to like lay down these lands and for you to see it or for me to Google it and figure it out. Whereas yeah. like, when a, when a KCI player starts a loop for players who are new to the game and Arena's trying to build this player base, whenever the player just kind of goes, I win, then it looks yeah. really bad because everybody goes, I guess, and we just like pick up our cards. Yeah. Um, like, yeah, that's, but, and that but happens that's, in all decks. That's that what happens you have for. Like, but granted, like, <laughs> no, sometimes, now, now I understand sometimes the KCI players, once you get into the groove, you're just like, yeah, yeah, do, 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 do. this is the piece I was missing. I click. Like, I understand that from a casting point, like, that can be difficult. If like you can't see their board because of well, all the stuff they're throwing it, around it, yeah, the boards are so the convoluted loop, it's too. So time consuming, mm -hmm. like the loop's so time consuming that like the casters can't keep up because the the players playing it who have yeah, are start. going super quick. Yeah, and so the casters are just trying to point out like, oh yeah, that that's an important part. Oh, yeah, that's an important part. Don't worry about those other ten things. That's an important part. Like that's what it feels like for a viewer yeah. who's like, uh, yeah, and especially if you're somebody who's just plays standard. And you're like, oh, I just picked up this arena. This game's cool. Oh, it's on Twitch. Let me watch this. And then you watch that happen. You go, I I'm never gonna get that good. Why but, am I playing arena? But, like, yeah. I'm never gonna be able to do that. But see, you also have to keep in mind that there's a subset of people like me, for instance, that whenever they see that happen, they're just like, 
oh, that's fantastic. I don't know how that person did that, but they just like played everything, and that's what I want to do. I right. like that. That's the kind of deck yeah, I like yeah. to play. But I'm saying from a from a banning standpoint, like oh, I didn't like yeah, no. being around. I results against it. It was really consistent, but it is beatable. Um, like it wasn't awful, but um, I think it was right to get rid. Of. Um, yeah, I, and it would be yeah, the same line as if yeah, Lantern pops sure. back up. Yeah, it's the same thing as if Lantern pops back up. I think it would be right to get rid of it, not because it's oppressive, but if it starts showing up in any numbers, just because like they're trying to cultivate a brand. I yeah. want them to keep making money because I want them to put money, more money in price <laughs> supports. And so like, even though I love Lantern, if it has to go for the brand to have health, then you know that's what has to happen. Yeah, and and I, and I think we can we can look back at you know just a couple of years after I think it was Pro Tour returned to Ravnica after Stannis Club Stannis Club Sifka. Wow, I mean it's hard to say. One with the original Eggs deck at the PT, and it was banned literally the next day. It felt like just because the game was so boring and so uninteresting to watch because he literally just kind of looped his deck so many times. And there's a lot of similarities between this and KCI. So. The, yeah. the trend has already been set, yeah, and this was, president was, has definitely going to be moving forward. There, I think going to be the there trend. There was some build see. up to it, though. That deck had been prominent for about three yeah. to six months prior. But yes, yeah, like him winning and and the way he did, just yeah, it was nail in the coffin. Yeah. I did think it was weird that like KCI lasted as long as it did, and I honestly was starting to be like, does like Matt Ness owe somebody money? And so they're just like <laughs> letting him win a couple more GPs, and yeah. then like. Then he'd be like, all right, guys, I paid, I paid them back. I can have my family back. Like, uh, well, he, the deck. like <laughs> last so, week, he posted a video on Channel Fireball basically saying, yes, it's time to ban this deck. It's like he was just like handing over, you know, his, his new tweet. Oh, I, I didn't. What did it say? So Palo's tweet was, uh, was uh, I'm downstairs and Matt Nass is upstairs taking a shower. Something yes, along these lines. Yes. And I shouted up. They banned KCI and the water turned off and he's been wailing for 30 minutes. Should I call 911? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Like so many like good like little like memes popped up of Matt Nats just like like crit like his brow furrowed and like his hand in his head his his hand in his head with his over in his hair. And it's just like, oh my god, people are gonna know what I'm doing now. Like <laughs> I mean, for those people out there who just want to cast Cryptic Command and Tarmogoyves and Teferis in Modern, get out of here. I couldn't be more happy right now. Yeah. I mean, so so I think it's good that it got banned. Uh, I do think there's other cards that are close to being unbanned, but um, the format's open enough where I don't think they necessarily want to bring back Stoneforge. They first need to see, like, is there another deck we need to get rid of? Like, does, yeah. does, does Faith mm -hmm. is looting... Or enable Phoenix and Hollow one a little too much, or Andrew yeah. for that matter. I, I wasn't a believer in the Phoenix deck until I watched it a couple of times, and that deck is a problem. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I, I've been with the Phoenix deck since it started, and it's <laughs> it's awesome. The only reason I I play I play Phoenix and I have it built and I play it some, but the only reason it's not my primary deck is because I've been on Dredge for like over a year and a half, um, and you know now it's insane, and I've been saying mm -hmm. for months like. Faith is looting is super close to getting banned because there's a large number of decks in which Faith is looting is just like ancestral visions. Yeah, it's brainstorm. It's just like, it's from like draw two cards, discard two cards that have value out of the graveyard. It generates mana because I get to play these hollow ones. I get to get these prize augments for free. I dredge some cards. Like I, I get the phoenixes. Like it does a lot of really stupid stuff. And yeah. a lot of people are like, oh, Cathartic Union is a more broken card. I don't think it is. Like I think I think Faith is looting is because Cathartic Union is more swingy. And in later games, yeah. it's like more of a blob, like spell colors and stuff. But Faithless Looting is just so stream, like Gorio's Vengeance. All, all the broken decks are Faithless Looting. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so, uh, a top deck Faithless Looting is better than a top deck uh, re Reunion, anyway. Yeah. I think Faithless Looting and I think um, Ancient Strings are two cards to watch. Because, like, if Ponder and Preordain are gone, those are two cards that are very close. Yeah. The, um, there was a really great article that um, I think it was Matt Spoling posted on Channel Fireball that talked about just how. The banning of KCI is indicative of how comfortable Watsi is with Modern right now. And then a lot of it was just talking about how stirrings and looting are just like right there on the edge of that discomfort level. And so I think I think you're absolutely right that if something goes in the next, you know, once uh, War of the Spark comes out, we have our next ban and restriction update. If, I, if we don't see one of those cards on there, I'll be very surprised. Yeah. I've got a list of like five or six cards that I'm like, these cards could go. And I think... Stoneforge would be fine coming back, but they don't want to bring it back until they know what the metagame is. They're being a lot more careful. Like, I yeah. think it's going to be super rare that you... I don't think you'll ever see, ever. I will, like, 
steak that you're never going to see ban and unban at the same time for the rest of Magic. Yeah, I, I think why, yeah. what, what they're doing it now where it's uh, at the set release and then after the Pro Tour and having it alternate like that, I think it was really smart on their part. Because like they must have like calculated time when they unbanned Jason Bloodbraid Elf, like that was perfect because it didn't blow up. But well, I, if you, and it was also right before M twenty five where you could get the chase. Well, well yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. That's but true. If you and, and Bloodbraid was in there, but uh, yeah, yeah, if yeah. you remember right, like I remember mentioning a long time ago when they changed the, the ban restriction list on the show. Um, that mm -hmm. I think they switched it to that double ban system because they don't want to ever ban and unban simultaneously but they want the option to do things in a smaller way and so because yeah. they need the information before they take something off the unbanned list yeah and so if they're gonna ban something like if they're gonna ban kci as much as i think stoneforge is probably okay in modern um they can't unban it at the same time they just ban to do ban a dominant deck because we don't know how the format's gonna shift and compensate yeah um yeah. and there so all it all it takes you to do that and then like soul sisters or some taxes deck becomes dominant Without yeah. Stoneforge, but you already banned, uh, unbanned Stoneforge, and now it's like extra dumb. Yeah. And then yeah. there's an I, interesting. Oh, go, go ahead, Zoom. Yeah. No, no, you're good. You're good. Uh, I was going to say, there's a really interesting statistic that Wizard shared when they talked about um, the decks that had the next most comparable number of top eights to KCI, and it was blue white control. And they're just like, we don't want to put Stoneforge in blue white control. And a lot of people <laughs> were just like, would you even put it in there? Like, yeah. like so, I don't think so, but may, maybe I could be. It's more of a Jess Guy card, if you ask me, but I could be wrong. In but reference just... to that, I, I actually think that, uh, Sean, for this, if they unban Stoneforge, you would see a preemptive ban of Batterskull, just as a, hey, we don't know how this would affect the format, so we're going to see if Stoneforge can play well with the other, like, swords and the other broken artifacts before we allow Batter Skull to be in the format with Stoneforge. Uh, but the way they've, the way they've yeah, done things before is they yeah. test. And so, like, I don't yeah. think they would preemptively ban because I think that looks bad. Yeah. Um, um, not necessarily because you're not changing how the how the game is currently played. You're adding a new factor, and you're not going to warp all the other decks to this new factor because Stoneforge Batter Skull is just like an auto include if you're playing a white. Well, deck. so but the thing is, like, so the art, the discussion you have if you're discussing a Stoneforge unban mm -hmm. isn't Stoneforge. The discussion is is a turn three Batter Skull if my opponent I dies in yeah, safe yeah, for modern. Yeah. If yeah, it's not yeah. safe for modern, I don't unban Stoneforge because then Stoneforge makes any future equipment we make a liability, which they would right? never do to begin with. Like we've yeah, seen, so, that, we've seen that trend. They're not going to make right. any powerful equipment. So, so Batter Skull is just our measure, and I think Batter Skull is probably fine. That's my personal take. But regardless mm -hmm. of that position, I think it would look bad if they go, "We're going to unban Stoneforge, and we're going to ban Batter Skull, and we might unban Batter Skull later." Because me as a player, I would say, "You're unbanning this card." You're banning a piece because you're afraid it might be too good. With that tells me that you probably didn't extensively have all these pros that are on your payroll tested. Like yeah. you have 32 players you're paying yeah. seven five thousand dollars a year for. Have them test this, and if it's not healthy, leave Batter Skull in there. It has a lot more use than Stoneforge for a variety of non-white decks. Yeah, and, like, it's, a, and it's a lot like when, when they when they ended up banning uh, Rampaging Ferocidon after they um, banned. Um, Romanop Ruins. It's like, well, why did they do this? And they're like, well, we tested it, and we think that it could be a thing, and I'm not so sure now. Like, after looking at all of standard, I don't see the argument for banning Oh, Rampaging Cross would be insane right now. It would be stupid. Okay, well, yeah. Yeah, yeah there you go. Well, it would be stupid. The problem, <laughs> it, be absurd. The problem with Frostdawn is it wasn't triple red, um, <laughs> but also, like, yeah. the, the biggest issue is that Frostdawn, from a from a design standpoint, the, the set it came out in, Vampire Tokens, which oh, life link. Yeah. The set after it was Conclave, uh, which was Selesnia with tokens and lifelink. And so they printed this card that hated out two entire archetypes in two straight sets. Um, and so they had some foresight then. Yeah. yeah. It, that makes more sense how to think about it. Yeah. Yeah. They're like, this actually dominant. This, a lot of the ways you battle these red decks is you gain life and go wide. And so they did this. And, the, and Chain Whirler, as strong as Chain Whirler is, I've, I've had this argument with a lot of people like, it is a lot easier for you to build your deck to not have a million. X ones than it is for you to build a green white deck that can't gain life and yeah. to win the game. Um, Definitely like there. I can build green white decks with anthems and X twos, and then have life gain to battle back from red. It's really hard to battle to build an X, a bunch of X ones that can't gain life and keep up with the red. Yeah, yeah. And I, I do want to make one more point on on the Stoneforge before we move on here. Um, you know, we talked about the premiums of ban on Batter Skull. 
and like in my mind you know like there's like a there's a there's a there's a hierarchy of equipment in modern so there's like batter skull cranial plating and then a massive gap and then you've got like the swords from from mirrodin and i'm thinking like you know if you were to preemptively ban so like a battle skull, like you said steven you know does stoneforge even see play at that point like are the swords even playable in modern so that to the level that they would be like there are only prison decks that play it. Um, there's already yeah. some prison decks that float around, but they would just not be very effective. And even Batter Skull, like I mean, Batter Skull is is hit or miss, even with the yeah. Stone Forge. Um, yeah. and, and there's a lot of artifact hate and stuff floating around. So like, it's one of those things where you just, you just have to decide like if they go turn two Stone Forge, and then they go turn three Batter Skull, or I guess the worst outcome, right, is the format broken if they go turn one Vile, turn three end of turn. Stone Forge, uh. untap, batter skull. <laughs> like, can the decks in the format keep up with that? And if people are turn fouring a batter skull, yes, they can keep up with that. Because yeah. there's a lot of decks where the opponent is dead already. Um, That's true. <laughs> and so, like, what does it do? It trades with a hollow one, takes, you know, takes eight, trades with a hollow one, so it, you know, ends up taking four, and then they have to now pay three, bounce it back, and re put it in play. Like, that it just seems real tough. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I like your uh, your squeaky voice, Stevens. Is, is, is that all you mean? Uh, yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. I thought all I was good. muted. Oh, it's all good. It's all good. Yeah, so so we'll definitely see, you know, obviously Modern's in a great spot right now with KCI being banned. I'm really excited to see where the format goes, what opens up, what decks sort of, you know, take its place as the top deck. Um, so it's, it's going to be interesting for the next couple of weeks until things kind of settle down again until after the Pro Tour when they decide to ban something else or unban something. But, uh... That's a, that's a story for a different episode, so we'll get to that eventually. Um, so let's talk about let's talk about the pre-release, which was over the weekend. Uh, Steven, you haven't played in one since when did you say Hour of Devastation? Yeah, it's been a little while. Okay, <laughs> but mainly because uh, whenever I was traveling for the GPS, like the pre-release weekend was like, oh, I'm gonna go like do something with family, like in town. Wait, Reasonable, I suppose. Yeah, that's true. but uh, but Sean and I, we uh, we battled. We Sean drove a million miles, didn't sleep, and still managed to play in one. <laughs> and, th and three one didn't. I got blown out by like one of the cards. <laughs> go <at> three one. <laughs> so what what guild did you uh, did you end up picking here, Sean? Um, I I've, so historically I've been a big Rakdos fan for limited. Um, I, I like a lot of other guilds for constructed play, but limited. I've always liked Rakdos and Ringling and limited, but I thought the Simic just seemed too good. Mm -hmm. The so good. are really, um, and if you can properly splash like red in it, it's it's really strong. Um, so I went I went Simic. Nice, nice. Um, any any notable pulls from your from your pool that were just kind of the the nuts? The pool was pretty subpar. Um, I had to win through like minimal interaction and just a couple tricky plays. Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, I, I got, like, my promo was the Mana Dork that has Adapt. Okay. Um, Incubation Druid. Which yep. isn't so bad in Limited. Yeah. Yeah. Surprisingly It's not bad in Limited. It's not phenomenal. Yeah. yeah. I like it. Um, it's good. It's not like it wins the game. Mm -hmm. So, like, you want a Bob that wins the game. I had an In Razor, which I never cast. Um. <laughs> it doesn't do a whole lot. I can tell you that much. <laughs> yeah. I like either one or I, was, I just never saw it. Um, and then I had, uh, I had Bedevil in my pool. And so for a second, I started looking. I was like, "Can I do four colors oh, with double black and a red spell?" Black. And I like, and I like was looking at it, and I had it set down. And I was like, "No, that's the exhaustion talking." And I pulled it all back up. <laughs> so I caught it before round one. I'm real that, close. That's good. That's good. But you ended up going yeah. three one. That's pretty. That's pretty sweet. Um, yeah. What I lost a hydroid crisis. Uh, yeah, he swung, real. and I chump blocked so I could swing back for lethal, and I was going to go to one because uh, I had a spell in hand to make it lethal. And so I chump blocked, and he played the one mana instant that gives a one one counter and untaps oh, yes. it to trample over for exaxes. And so <laughs> I was like, "Hey, can I read that card?" Because I didn't know what that I, I knew of the card, but I just wanted to read exactly what he said. So he was like, hey, uh, "He was like real like he was like yeah, uh, if it untaps it, that doesn't take it out of combat." I was like, "Child, I've been and this guy was like forty five or fifty. I was like, <laughs> "Child, I've been playing." Since original Zendikar. I understand that. I would just like to read the card. <laughs> like, the card from. I was like, I, I get that you that you killed me. I just haven't seen this card because I consider it not playable and limited. So I'd like to see why you consider it playable and limited. Yeah. And I, looked at it, I was like, yep, not playable and limited. Here you go. Have, have a good day. I don't know. It turns on... It is a long one to come here, though. It turns it on all of your adapt creatures immediately. It does. Yeah, and it's good. And it untaps. Like, it's, it's better than I thought. But at the same time, when I was looking like... 
But a lot of times, I want to adapt my dudes for more than one counter. Yeah. Like I want to make my five five a seven seven. Yeah, yeah, you're not wrong there. But, Definitely not wrong. But there. I think it's I think it's worth running like a one of. So I think I was I think I evaluated it wrong. Uh, but yeah, he just he caught me with it. But at the same time, if I double block, I'm dead the next turn. So I was like, we just yeah. gotta hope we don't oh, have yeah. a trick here. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, so I was very much along your lines of thinking there, Sean. I, I played I played Gruel on my Saturday night event and splashed blue, and then Sunday I played Simic and splashed red, you know, just because that's the, how the, the pools ended up being. Um, I had end race for the most synergistic splash. Yeah, it is. It just makes the most sense. Like nothing mm -hmm. else comes close to the power level. Of, like there's like Azorius, Rakdos, or Zav, and then like a ten mile gap between Gruel and Simic, and they're, I think they're just interchangeable completely. Um, but yeah, I had Israel with foreigners in my Saturday night pool, which never actually ended the game, but always was just like a point shy. And it just drove me nuts the entire night. <laughs> had had a Hydroid Crassus in that deck, and that card is just absurd. Even at four mana, it's fine. At ten mana, it's just it's absolutely stupid. And uh, my Sunday pool was also pretty good. You had Incubation Druid, uh, Adapt the, um, what's the uh, one that goes and gets itself out of your deck again? The one that you're, Guardian. Yeah, Guardian. Yeah. Even without getting extra copies, just stupidly powerful. Um, Hydro, the, the, the Lizroid guy that pulls off the counters and doubles them. That yeah, guy, Lizrog. That went to 25-25 against one of my opponents. And he's just I looking get at one of those guys. Oh, yeah. it's it's so, well, it's well, it just kind of blew my mind because like there was a turn where I had so much mana between a, um, incubation druid, all my untapped mana, and so I was able to play the crass the the Lizrog, take all of the counters off of everything else, and then I cast adaptive biomancy or no applied biomancy, the one that puts counter on up to three creatures and doubles them. And I'm like, all right, let's just see what happens here. Did the math? I'm like, yeah, you're dead. <laughs> Did you uh did you get the gruel berserker who takes a counter off and shoots for two? I didn't have that, but I that had guy was, that guy was real good. Yeah, he was real yeah. solid. I had, he hits any target. Like yeah, if he was just, if he was uh, just player, I think he'd still be all right as a four four. But yeah, like, any target is great. Yeah, there was a lot of times why like one of my opponents I. I like swung and I just needed to get the six six off the board, the six six defender, and then he can like adapt it for three and like make him not have defender. And I was like, I yeah. don't want to deal with a nine nine. No, so uh, that away. is that is nine mana. It's not for three. Hang on. Oh, for no, no, no. It's, yeah, it's nine mana to activate it. <laughs> it's three. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, no, the adapt is three. Yeah, three counters. Um, and so I, sw I swung with the eel that's a three three that has adapt for two and it, well, for three that adapts for two. Yeah. Um, and blocks it, and I adapt him into a 5-5, five five, and then I, like, take one off, and then I shoot the 6-6, six six, and then my 4-4 four four trades with the 6-6, six six, and I was like, we got him! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the board! Yeah. yeah my, I, I, I won't say this. Uh, my, this. Oh, go, go ahead, Go ahead. <laughs> all right. My fun story with uh, Teamer uh, this week was uh, I opened a sealed pool on Magic Arena that had Rhythm of the Wild and uh, oh, so the good. Wizard Rog. So I was just like, and you get a one one counter, and you get a one one counter, and you get haste, and you're dead. And you get haste. <laughs> the the scariest thing I had to face all weekend was on Sunday. My opponent was had, was on was playing Jund, and just a couple black cards he'd splashed in there. And his turn four play after doing nothing for three straight turns was the Adaption Project, which draws you a card Ooh. if a creature you play does not share any with a creature in play or in your graveyard. I'm like, okay, that's not terrible. I'm still got four creatures in play already. I'm going to keep beating you down. Then he plays Nikia, and I'm like, okay, this is possibly bad. And he's empty-handed at this point, too. I'm like, okay, if I can just not die on my turn or his next turn, I think I'm okay. So I swung in, and he untaps, and he's like, okay. He draws a card, plays a creature, trigger with with the, the Mana Flare and the Adaption Project, draws a card, plays another creature, draw like four straight <laughs> draws, and his like his five mana just turned into a, a bazillion. And the next thing I know, I'm staring down a giant board. I'm like, well, shit. <laughs> Make your own experimental frenzy. <laughs> right? It? Like, it, was, it just blew my mind. I'm like, okay, this is the only time that Nakia will actually get any work done. Oh, you have not been paying attention to these teamer lists, buddy. I'm, I'm, yeah, just, I'm just saying... That, for, card's been, that card's been crushing. For, for a pre-release, like, it just seems like such a rough card to cast and then have, like any amount of interaction in your deck but like his well, was like, just a, perfect right a then a lot there. of the simic decks though haven't had great interaction like their spells aren't phenomenal no so they're, you're, they're like, definitely simic, not yeah and you get nikia you're just like all right i just won't play these bad bounce spells i'll just play more dudes yeah i will just go dudes forever that's kind of cool like yeah i mean uh, hey, the, nikia, the nikia card is, is is a pretty pretty big hitter if you get the right pool yeah most definitely most definitely um also a five five is nothing to laugh at yeah i mean it's still a huge body 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. So from, from your guys' perspective, you know, just quickly here, you know, if we're going to, obviously we've kind of established that Gruul and Simic are just the best guilds for sealed and probably draft. I've gotten to draft one time on Arena and I drafted what I thought was a really good Simic deck, but even a good Simic deck falls apart when you don't draw lands. So I won't count that as, you know, results. <laughs> um, so if you guys had to rank the other three guilds, how would they be stack up for you guys in a limited environment? Uh, so I, uh, I actually think Orzov is slightly above Gruul in draft. Um, just because uh, the cards that are good with Afterlife um, that aren't gold. So sure. you don't necessarily have to worry about getting like the Riot creatures that are gold for Gruul. You just get to pick up these like good Afterlife things. And then what the uh, one in a black uh, sacrifice a creature or pay five life to destroy a creature, I think that spell is really strong. Very powerful card, yeah. And it's a lot easier to build around it in draft than, you know, just, oh, did I open this plus good? Oh, a- absolutely, yeah, yeah. And so would you put just, like, Rakdos and Azorius just at the bottom, just kind of interchangeably? Uh, Rakdos above Azorius. Yeah. Okay. I- I've actually seen the Rakdos decks be pretty, pretty strong. Um mm-hmm. I, I've only found Azorius to be the only deck that is really narrowly difficult. Yeah, it can yeah. it can win. Um, the problem, especially in draft, is that like Azorius and Orzov both want all these white flyers. Yeah, and that always can really win is that they get a bunch of flyers. And so, I I've found that Rakdos is competitive. I I think it's my hierarchy was Simic. If you splash Simic alone, drops. But Simic, mm-hmm. if you can yeah. splash. Orzov, Gruul, and Rakdos, and I think all four are fairly close. Like, I don't have a okay, big gap, sure. and then, like, Azorius, I have pretty far down, because there's a lot of things it's doing that I don't want to do. Yeah, yeah. I, I, as soon as I saw Addendum, I was not impressed. Um, I, I did have the um, precognitive perception, the draw three or scry three, then draw three, if you do it in your main phase for my Sunday pool, which was powerful if I wasn't being pressured. But mm-hmm. if I needed to find action, I'm like, oh, I can't do this. I have to, you know, play a guy and hold up, you know, pump spells or whatever, removal spells, and maybe get to fire this off. So it's, I, I'm definitely with you there, Sean. It's definitely not a, a, what I consider a good blue mechanic, so to speak. Yeah. So yeah. But yeah, I'm looking forward to drafting this set. My local my local game store does draft for FNM every Friday night. Um, I've, I was really successful with Guild's draft. Um, love drafting me some Grixis control decks. So I can't wait to find my uh, <laughs> my wheelhouse in uh, Allegiance draft. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, I, I need to see you get a picture of this deck. This deck I drafted. It was five creatures. Two of them had Defender, <laughs> and I only really had the uh, the five mana Dragon that that pings for one when it attacks, and that was really my only win con besides that. And the the six mana cannot be countered deal six damage to any 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 target at instant speed. Like that was oh, yeah. it. And it was all um, bounce spells, tap spells, and direct damage. And mo- all my opponents were just like, "Well, I'm gonna play this creature. Like, cool, kill it, lock it down, bounce it back to your hand." I I won most of my games with a single card left in my library. It was my favorite three zero of my life. <laughs> <laughs> right on, right on. I'll send you That's guys awesome. the picture later. It's it is it is a truly uh, it's it's a it's a masterwork if there ever was one. I was I was impressed with myself that night. <laughs> so let's 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 shift gears here a little bit to kind of wrap things up for tonight. You know, obviously, new cards means new standard. Um, we've seen over the past couple of months with Guilds of Ravnica coming out, uh, Golgari Midrange was a really big deck. Um, all different kinds of flavors of Teferi, Jeskai, Blue White, um, Is It Drakes have been kind of a, the, the control half of things. Mono Red's been a thing. Mono White's been a good aggro deck. We've seen Green White pop up here and there. Um, Sean, I'll get to you first. What 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 do you think the sort of the initial um, Ravnica Allegiance standard is going to look like? You know, week one because we have um, Indianapolis for the SCG Open is this weekend. What do you see as sort of like the front runner of the format? So I I am actually expecting standard this to be one of the first new standards that maybe I ever remember that is going to be just wide open but not because it's people tuning decks but like wide open with really good decks. Um, I've been pretty open on Twitter about the fact that I think Arena and the way they've advertised it and the way um, oh man her name's Fish she works for uh, she does the content management for uh, she's on Twitter and she's phenomenal and she like gets a lot of people engaged. Um, and the way they've done it has made this exciting environment. Yeah. And so 
a, a week and a half ago, I was like getting ready for the LCQ and I have SCG and I have Memphis and I'm like, Burn is absurd. It's broken. I played Burn at Jersey last year. I like the red black version a lot. Theater of Horror, Sovereign's Bite swings a lot of matches. Mm -hmm. uh, light the stage is just stupid. The fact um, that card says until your next turn completely escaped me when I was reviewing it. That card is stupid. Well, it's, it, it's proven. There's been countless pros. I think Huey Jensen or somebody was like, I didn't realize it said until your next turn. It's amazing how many successful Magic players don't read cards. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I actually don't. I miss a lot of cards, but I actually noticed that one. So when people were talking about it, I was like, I don't understand. Like, am I stupid? Like, I, I think this is insane. But it's because nobody else read the card. Yeah. Um, but like that we're deck, all just like, stupid. That's all it is. Yeah. So I was like all in on that deck, but now like all the format because of arena is shifting so drastically for people to keep up, and yeah. all these people, it doesn't cost money to build decks with these new sets. Yeah. If you've been grinding, you have wild cards. Yeah. You, you can build decks with these new. Um, and so like we have a lot of different nexus shells. We have a lot of like green, white X green blue x green black x um that are all built to like hate out these red decks but then some of them are starting to shift and hate out the nexus decks like i i honestly there's i i think nexus i think burn i think green white blue i think green black possibly green black blue and i think green blue are like all decks that i could conceivably see myself sleeving and if that's the case that i could see showing up at the turn nice uh, so it's it's real absurd the number of decks I think are competitive. And even in those decks, like they're all different versions. Nexus has like Bant Nexus, has um, four color Nexus, has Gate Nexus, has everything, Eight right? Nexus. <laughs> There's even Teamer Nexus as well. Yeah. I my So I before the set came out, I've been playing Blue Red um, Jaya Nexus. And oh, so nice, yeah. I like just casually through Growth Spiral. Um, Gifts of Paradise and Splendor Reclamation in this Team Mergia Nexus deck with no other tuning. And, like, I had been, like, just muddling around with it, you know, winning about, like, I'd win two, lose one, win three, lose four. Like, it was back and forth. I threw these in here, and I was just, like, one five in a row. Like, just, like, bloop, there you go. like Splendor Reclamation is stupid. Um, so, like, there's just, there's so many things that are all really powerful. And, like, if, if you play one of these Nexus decks or these Green White decks, and you and your opponent plays mountain on turn one you're like oh crap i'm dead <laughs> but then if like but then if you're playing the red deck and you play against a player who's like has the explore package and lyra and shalai and like all those pieces then like you're in trouble um if they hit those parts and so there's just like so many things going on it's real crazy yeah no i totally agree what about what about you steven where do you see standard kind of going in the next couple of weeks here uh so like sean it's, it's just going to be pretty open uh I'm actually most likely going to be playing a, a burn deck for, like, the first time ever. Wait, like, which is so he's... unlike you. It just doesn't make any sense. Uh, oh, okay, so let me put <laughs> The burn deck is really good at drawing cards. I'm in. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, it's, uh, it's a cool deck. Uh, I know I have also noticed a shift. Uh, I've been putting uh, Ang Angrath on my board to kind of counteract that. It's been doing, doing wonders, so... Uh, we'll see how it develops. Um, I'm curious to see how much Arena changes the like local meta games. Um, sure, yeah. Just because so many people have access to it because it's a free platform. Like you know, before even though we had Magic Online that would release like the week of, like the Wednesday of the like big tournaments, uh, you didn't really see a change just because deck lists weren't widely known. Yeah. Uh, with Arena and there being more hype on Twitch, people are following along on the deck list. And I know there's a dedicated tweeter who is uh, uh, like compiling all the pro deck lists just so that people can see it. And so it's very interesting how rapidly things are evolving. And I think because of this format, things are going to be more open because you're not going to be able to see a definitive. These are doing great, but you still get to see all the decks that people have tried, which which I think is probably a better take than just posting all five of the deck lists. Yeah, that are twenty cards different or how whatever whatever wizard's yeah. metric was. Yeah. And I, and I and I definitely and we'll definitely want to talk about um, you know, um, the, the impact of arena uh, at some point because we could probably dedicate an entire episode to just that alone. I mean my relatively limited exposure to it so far has just been mm -hmm. 
phenomenal. I, I love getting on and doing the best of one drafts on Arena. Even though it's apparently not the best you know, value for my money, I don't care because it's just <laughs> so much magic so quickly and I can just walk away whenever I want to. And I, like when I was, you know, I can remember testing for GP Denver um, a couple of years ago and testing online on Magic Online and just being utterly bored. And just Arena's, just, it's so much more fun. Well, like, <laughs> Arena just goes to show how important a flashy product is. Oh, as yeah. As far as like, retaining attention. Because, you know, like, Magic Online is a solid program. Well, Magic <laughs> Online... Careful there. <laughs> Magic Online is, has been as good... Like, it, it's a very good program in hindsight, or, like, yeah. in contrast to the previous Magic Onlines we've had. Yeah. But it's, it's a lot more stable, and they have made a lot of improvements. But that, like, isn't enough to keep attention. Like, just having the beautiful, like, backgrounds and arena and, like, all that... It has, like, three backgrounds. Nice, They're all boring yeah. as hell. <laughs> I like the yeah. scorpion I can click on. That's about it for the background. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, like, for now, right? Like, yeah. once they get more artwork and stuff going through, like, you'll have a cycle. I'm sure they're going to do theme stuff just like, you know, Hearthstone does. So oh, yeah. They, they just need more time. Yeah. That, I mean, we're still in early access, right? Yeah, well, I mean, we'll be in early yeah, access forever. Yeah, we're still in pre-season one. We have a pre-season two that's not even out yet. Like, yeah. We're still in pre-seasons. Yeah, I, I, I can like the first thing I did whenever I started up my first arena game was what things can I click on to make them do something? Yeah. And if they didn't do something, I was like, well, that's kind of boring. So, <laughs> freaking Hearthstone has ruined me apparently for you know, even as little as I played that game. Um, but yeah, uh, what I, are these cool cards? Huh, the scorpion! I got him! <laughs> exactly. Oh, I chased it off the edge. Oh, I made the gargoyle stand up and stretch. I'm like, yes! This is all I want out of magic! magic. <laughs> Our bird, I mean. Oh, man. <laughs> But yeah, I, I definitely think we'll, we want to do like a full like arena, you know, like the the in the here and now, just like what's the effect of that's magic has had, you know, that it's had on on magic in general. Where do we see the future of, of arena going? You know, what's that going to do to magic moving forward? You know, they talk about the mythic championship and all kinds of just crazy things that are going to be happening now that Wizards has just like fully like bear hugged this esport idea. And I and I think and I I, I I think it's more they properly figured out how to bear hug it. They've been like that, trying to get this to work for a while. Yeah, long. yeah, that's that's very true. But I, but I think you can definitively say that it's gonna be you know a positive for all of us. You know, oh, yeah, in, the, in the long run, every every Magic player can just benefit. The fact that you get a free draft out of every pre-release kit um, on Arena is awesome. Um, and I just think that like that's the best way moving forward. And you know, if Wizards can keep this this you know going, I think we are in a uh, a very uh, Halcyon esque time of magic. There's your uh, vocabulary for the week, guys. Halcyon. <laughs> so <Right. laughs> you gotta throw a little bit of language arts in for the kids. You gotta teach them something. I mean, walk away with some, <laughs> walk, walk away with something, kids. You learn something every day. And you're a better person for it. So that's your teacher, oh, yeah. Sean. Every, every day is a learning experience. Exactly. Learning exactly. Experience. Whether it's learning a new magic card or a new word, learn something every day. Yep. So that's profound enough to, I think, close tonight on. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, so we've got Indianapolis this weekend. Definitely keep your eyes peeled to the Star City Games Open. You know, those guys have been killing it so far this year. I love that Emma Handy is now on the uh, the broadcast team. She is fantastic and amazing to, to what her job is now. So I think we're going to see a lot of cool stuff going on this weekend and a lot of cool decks moving forward. And you're going to see a lot more of us as well because we, we, are, we are back, back in full force. Yes. Yeah, now that I'm traveling, I'm going to be streaming a lot more frequently than I had. Yeah, where, where can we find you on uh, on stream? Uh, stream will be uh, at, at Twitter and on tw uh, Twitch at Busted Sleeps. All right. Um, all lowercase, one word. I'm going to tweet when I go live. I'll post deck what I'm doing and all that jazz. And now that cool. I'm on travel and now that I'm working, living kind of just out my, on my own in Orlando, I'll be streaming pretty free. Cool. Yeah. And I'll def I'm definitely going to make an effort to make more time to stream as well. I Like I said, I love doing the drafts on Arena, so... As long as I can, you know, swing one of those once a week, I'll be happy. Yeah. What about what yeah, about you, Sue? Be good. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, I'm opposite of Sean. Now that I'm not traveling, I'm gonna think <laughs> about streaming some more. So, uh, yeah. You will Granted, find content from all of us. 
Yeah, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Yeah. I, I, look at, I need to study for the finals engineering exam, so it might not be super soon, but hopefully this summer. That's, that sounds also important. And where can we find you, as always, on, on, on your platforms, Stephen? Well, uh, my one tweet a quarter is at <laughs> spellpierce on Twitter. And then you can find me, uh, hopefully, on Discord before too long. I still need to see about setting that up for all yeah, so I, I can have another place to chat. And we're recording on Discord right now, and I don't like it at all. <laughs> oh, no. Well, there, okay. there has to Trash be a better way. Idea. There, has to, figure something else there has to be a better way to do this, but if it works for now, that's, I'm, that's all I care about, but... I couldn't find my number for a while. It's just so ridiculous. So sometimes it's just operator. I, mean. it, I, I that that I believe. That I believe. <laughs> my job is filled with operator error. That's just it. The ID ten T errors are pretty great too. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I think that that does it for us tonight, guys. Steven, it's it's your line. All right, everyone. We'll see you next time. <laughs> we'll do it again. Woo! Have a good night, everybody. See ya.